Okay, guys. So yesterday we were studying about the pressure belts. So in those pressure belts part, we studied about we studied about the pressure cells and the, how that formation of cells are taking places and how pressure belts are formed. So yesterday we finished about that one, all those parts. Then we studied about the doldrum and horse latitude. Then we were studying about the permanent winds. Okay. So we were studying about the permanent wind. They are in the last point in the easterly and westerly. We had little bit confusion. So there see, you all would have understood the north easterly trade winds and south easterly trade winds. Any doubt in that part? Any doubt in that part? Trade winds or pressure bells? Okay. So no issues. So now we'll start our class about the pressure permanent winds. Okay. So just study carefully about permanent wind in this part because next now in the next slides we will be studying about the wind types okay so there so there we have the permanent winds so that we, we are teaching here is a permanent winds so see how all this is creation are happening so here okay this is our earth and we have our equator here in the mid middle part okay so this is our equator so here what is happening at the 5 degree north and the 5 degree south okay here we have the creation of low pressure belt 5 degree north and 5 degree south this is northern pole this is southern pole so and these both are 90 degree so at the 5 degree north and 5 degree south we have the low pressure belt so here we have the equatorial low pressure belt and here we have the absence of winds so that this area is known as the doldrum so here doldrum types of wind is flowing so remember doldrum then we have the 30 degree north to 35 degree north 30 degree 35 degree here we have the horse latitudes and this is the part of subtropical subtropical high pressure belt okay so and here we have the horse latitude and everyone would have studied here those sales part here we have that at least sale then here we have the 60 degree north 65 degree so, uh, north and here in the same way here also 30 35 and 60 so see here here in the equator here 5 degree north and 5 degree south we have the low pressure then here in the subtropical area in the northern hemisphere we have the high pressure and in the southern hemisphere also we have the high pressure so all these low pressure and high pressure we all got clear understanding of it in a study classes all those high pressure belt low pressure belt and how is that creation is happening okay so and then here again we have the low pressure area and here since it is flowing flowing so here we have the high pressure at the both the hemisphere and here we have the low pressure so see here study we studied about the trading okay see here wind blows from low pressure to high pressure sorry wind blows from high pressure to low pressure okay so remember this one this part is usually all those climatology parts okay so wind blows from if wind is blowing that concept takes place that high pressure to low pressure okay so here what is happening here we have the low pressure at the equator here and here we have the high pressure so here from here if wind is blowing then wind will blow from high pressure to low pressure then similarly in the southern hemisphere also high pressure to low pressure and then you all would have studied the study we discussed about the ferrules law so everyone remember this law also okay a study i did not mention this law this law is what a study we studied the concept but i did not mention the name of this law so see that police force due to the police force what is happening there is a wind deflection wind deflection towards the right in the northern hemisphere in northern hemisphere okay and due to coalis force wind had deflection towards left in the southern hemisphere so remember this one and this particular process this particular concept you know in the ferrell's law so remember don't get confused so this is the ferrell's law okay so now that feral law is what due to rotation what is happening due to rotation 
there is a creation of force on our earth surface and that particular force you know is the that particular force you know is the wait a minute that particular force you know is the coriolis force okay so that coriolis force so in that ferrell's law what we have that wind when the wind will blow so in the northern northern hemisphere it will deflect rightwards and in the southern hemisphere it will deflect southwards so that uh, sorry leftwards in the southern hemisphere that is due to the coriolis force so here what is happening so in the this is in the southern hemisphere part so here what will happen it is flow now here wind is blowing okay high pressure to low, low pressure so here what will happen it will start blowing through this word left words okay then similarly in the northern hemisphere what will happen it will blowing start blowing through the right words okay now see this is coming down this is like a inverted type so here if this would have been this way so this is the right now this, since it is inverted so this is the right okay so now this it is why it is only like little bit deflected why because here we have the see in the equator we have the coriolis force as zero okay and here in the tropical area we have some amount of coriolis force so only that little bit of deflection is there okay so due to it now you can see here that deflection is happening from the eastern side this is eastern side so it is happening from the eastern side so this particular this both winds are known as the trade winds okay this both winds are known as the trade winds and that winds in this southern hemisphere it is known as the south eastern trade winds so yesterday we had confusion i said about the south western so don't get it confused that is the south eastern trade winds here you can see see that it is blowing from the eastwards okay and similarly in this area in this area also it is blowing from the eastwards okay and here it is getting deflected why that little bit deflection is there that is because of less amount of coriolis force so deflection is there so that is little bit okay so this is the north east north east trade winds okay so remember this one these both are trade winds and other name is given as south east trade winds and north east trade winds okay now see here here what is happening here we have the tropical ice soft tropical ice high pressure and here in this temperate part we have the low pressure okay so wind will blow from high pressure to low pressure so here what will happen now high pressure to low pressure so wind will blow like okay now here what is happening we know that here we have the like uh, coriolis force has increased here okay so here we have that much coriolis force that it can it can bend the light that wind to the 90 degree angle okay and due to coriolis force you all know that in the northern hemisphere wind blows toward the that deflection happens toward the right words okay so deflection will happen toward the right words at a right angle okay and it is blowing from the western side so this particular winds are known as the westerly this particular winds are known as the westerly then similarly in the southern hemisphere here also the same process will happen high pressure to low pressure and in the southern hemisphere what will happen it will deflect towards the left towards so left is this so here so here this wind is also known as the westerly so these both winds are known as westerly so if someone asks trade winds blows from which degree to which degree so that is 5 degree to north to 30 degree north and also 5 degree south to 30 degree south okay and that will if in north it is blowing that is north eastern trade winds trade winds and in south if it is blowing it is south eastern trade winds okay so you must remember that these both are the trade winds okay so if they ask the degree part so you must remember this part okay then now westerly we have seen so westerly here what will happen 90 degree exact like it will be perpendicular okay so that deflection and it is totally like it is coming from the western side so this particular part is known as the westerly okay so westerly means what they are between the 35 degree to 60 degree both north and south north and south so this part is known as the westerly now what is happening here now here at the pole we have the high pressure why we have high pressure because here we have the frozen part so here frozen part is what where here what will happen due to the frozen now cold wind will be blowing so here what will happen here we will have the high pressure 
you all remember that formula that temperature is inversely proportional to pressure okay so here we have the high pressure and here we have the low pressure so now wind will blow from high pressure to low pressure and that same thing will happen in the southern hemisphere also so wind is blowing from high pressure to low pressure okay and now in the northern hemisphere what happens in the northern hemisphere it happens that due to coriolis force now at the pole side at the both the pole we have the maximum coriolis force okay at both the poles we have the maximum coriolis force so here what will happen now in the northern hemisphere it will deflect towards the rightwards so it will deflect towards the rightwards okay it will, here also it will be like 90 degree or you can say above little bit above 90 degree then here it will deflect towards the leftwards so what it is what, how they are deflecting they are deflecting from the eastern side okay so that's why this parts are known as the easternish these parts are known as the easternish and at the pole we have the polar winds okay and this part you can also say at the easternish polar winds so that also you can say and at the pole we have the polar winds so this is all about the permanent winds on our earth surface so you must remember all those angles also okay so we have the trade winds between 5 to 30 then uh, we have the westerlies 35 to 60 and then 65 to 90 we have the easterlies so this is all about the trade winds so you all must remember about the sorry this is all about the permanent winds so you all must know about this permanent so now see we will see in the diagram also that everything i mentioned in the slide so if any confusion just go through the slides also when you are when you are free at home and then if any doubt you can ask me so now see in this slide so just have a look at this slides and remember the ferrous law that coriolis force okay remember that law because that law is very important in this climatology and also remember the this formula that temperature is inversely proportional to pressure so remember that one also so you can see in this diagram here so see here here we have the easterlies both sides the southern and northern hemisphere then here we have the 35 to 60 here we have the westerlies then we have the tropical winds sorry trade winds at both this place and equator we have the low pressure so this is all about the permanent winds okay so now we will study about the now we will see about the classification of winds winds and its classification so this is this was all about the winds sorry pressure winds pressure cells and the doldrum horse latitude and the permanent winds so now we will see about the winds and its in, and its classification so in that also in its winds type is there permanent winds so that we have seen so see here okay now we will study about the permanent winds so see in this part and in these slides i have mentioned all about the this part also about the all the local winds blowing so they are the tertiary winds so that all winds we will see so see here classification of winds so they are divided based on the three types one is permanent winds three types one is permanent winds or you can say it as the prevailing winds okay then next we have the secondary winds and also known as the periodic wind okay because in some periods only it blows so that is periodic winds okay and the third one we have the that is local winds or tertiary winds okay so these are the three types of wind and what is wind see if air is blowing horizontally so horizontal blow of air is wind and if air is blowing then that is known as the air current that is air current so this is the wind so see we have the permanent winds so permanent winds we have the trade winds westerly easterly that is polar easterly so these are the permanent winds then we have the secondary or periodic winds so that is seasonal winds and also the periodic winds so in this seasonal winds means what in india we have the monsoons so that is the seasonal winds then we have the periodic winds periodic means what that land and sea breeze mountain and valley breeze so these both are the secondary winds and they are also known as the pre periodic winds so this is about the primary wind and secondary wind okay then next we have the 
then next we have the tertiary vein that is tertiary vein that is also known as the local veins okay so see here first before studying all those parts of veins how that taking place that everything will see will first will understand the phenomena so see here here what is happening all we saw that temperature is inversely proportional to pressure okay by this by this formula we study about the pressure valves we study about the pressure cells and also about the so by all this process we study about by the this temperature is inversely proportional to pressure by this formula we study about this particular part okay now see here and also we saw that horizontal flow of air region is the wind okay now see how this wind is blowing so see here. suppose if you take the example of our country india okay now our india lies in the tropical part we have tropic of cancer tropic of cancer crossing through states okay crossing through some of the states in our india so totally there are eight states so through eight states eight or seven states that will study in india geography there will come from so through this much states tropic of cancer is crossing okay so tropic of cancer is crossing is what see our earth is tilted and what is happening sunlight is coming directly at this place this place and over at this part also okay so here what is happening now our earth our this all those solid continental parts are heated here in this this area so if it is heated so here what will get now we say that temperature is inversely proportional to pressure so here we have the high temperature so high temperature means what we'll have the low pressure and then what happens now we have we have water bodies in this area okay now here we have the water bodies so water bodies what will happen they will be the little cooler only in the morning time before the sunlight okay and even the if the evaporation happens means what here they will be cooler water okay and warmer warm water is right they will turn into the vapor so here we have the temperature low here we have the low temperature so low temperature is what we have the high pressure okay so here in this area what will happen wind will blow from high pressure to low pressure okay and remember this one because this is very important for understanding the part of monsoon so that uh, that we will see in the seasonal waves so there i will show you that how monsoons are taking place in our indian continental part so there we will see about the monsoon so uh, you all would have a study about the permanent means all now in this class we say about the permanent means so that was all about the permanent means and now we will start studying about the secondary winds so see here these are the different types of wind so permanent winds secondary winds local winds in the local winds we have in india or blue and also it is known in some of the places like kali and the or you can say mango showers so they are the local winds then we have the mistral we have foyo we have sirocco we have harmattan so they are the local winds so that we'll see when we study then see what are the factors affecting the wind circulation so that all factors you all must know see first factor is the pressure difference that is pressure gradient force so that we saw that if that wind velocity will be high so how it will be high that everything pressure gradient force is what the difference between the two pressures okay so that determines the speed of wind so that determines the speed of winds so wind blows from high pressure to low pressure so that will be determined by this part okay so here what happens see we study we study that if air is warm so it will ascend okay so it will ascend means what here what will happen here low pressure will happen low pressure creation will be there and when the air descends then it creates the high pressure and air descends is what cool air descends and warm air rises ascends so remember that one also so here pressure so due to pressure also we have the variation of winds in our continental part okay so that is pressure gradient force so pressure gradient force affect the wind circulation in our continental part then see this is about the continental part and you must remember one more thing that pressure gradient force there they act perpendicular to the isobars so isobar is what line 
लाइन ज्वाइनिंग द सेम प्रेशर लाइन ज्वाइनिंग द सेम प्रेशर तो दैट इज द आइसो बार तो रिमेम्बर दैट वन लाइन ज्वाइनिंग द सेम प्रेशर सो सी यर हियर लाइंस आर ज्वाइनिंग द सेम प्रेशर सो दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइंस आर नोन एज द आइसो बार्स ओके एंड रिमेम्बर वन थिंग दैट प्रेशर ग्रेडिएंट फोर्स दे एक्ट परपेंडिकुलर टू द आइसो बार सपोज सी सपोज दिस इज अ लो प्रेशर एरिया ओके 800 mb and here we have the 900 mb so here we have the high pressure so we will blow from high pressure to low pressure okay so here what will happen now it is blowing from high pressure to low pressure so here this lines so now here we have the 900 mb then at, at this plus also will be having 900 mb lines so from here to this so it will act perpendicular okay it will act perpendicular it won't deflect or anything so they will act the in the perpendicular pressure gradient force and the you must remember that it acts perpendicular to the isobars then here in this part you all can easily understand so that is the pressure gradient force then next is the coriolis force so coriolis force that we study that because of that only we have the rightward deflection in the northern hemisphere and leftward deflection in the southern hemisphere so that is about the coriolis force so that's why that is also affecting the wind circulation if there would have been no coriolis force then wind will be blowing in its straight path wherever it want to take turn it, it can take turn okay so due to coriolis force only we have the rightward and leftward deflection so that is about the coriolis force so this also affect the wind circulation okay then coriolis force how that is created that is it it is created due to the rotation okay and rotation of the speed of the earth rotation rotational speed of the earth we have maximum at the equator okay so that's why what happens here we have the zero coriolis force okay coriolis force is inversely proportional to rotational speed of the earth so here we have the zero coriolis force and as you go towards the pole coriolis force keeps on increasing okay and rotational speed at this part we have zero how zero means you all can understand if you see the even the globe part also so if you rotate the earth zero earth is rotating from west to east okay so if the earth is rotating so here what will happen this part will be not moving they will be in a like silent way okay and here we have the bulging at the equator part so here we have the largest mass so here we will have the highest rotational speed okay so that's why here what is happening due to the maximum rotational speed we have the coriolis force as zero so coriolis force is also inversely proportional to rotational speed so this also you all must remember then see factors affecting the wind circulation first we say about the pressure gradient force then next is the coriolis force then next one is the frictional force now because of that monsoon only we have high amount of rainfall in the northern hemisphere and when the wind is that monsoon is going towards the bay of bengal area here what is happening here we don't have any mountains so there will be no collision or anything so wind will be just blowing on and after that when it reaches this area when the himalayan air then there will have the rainfall okay so now there will have the rainfall so this is the monsoon process in our indian continent okay and when the when during the winter season what will happen here during the winter season our this continent part will be the will have the low temperature so here we will have the high pressure area so that time what will happen that particular trade winds they will blow towards the low pressure area so when they are blowing towards the low pressure area then in the ocean parts we have the creation of inter inter tropical convergence zone so this is the warmer part so this is how the monsoons are taking place so this is all about the monsoons in india and they are, that is the seasonal wind okay now next is the land bridge and sea bridge okay in this also see all this wind parts all these winds parts what is happening temperature inversely proportional to pressure this part is taking place so you must remember this formula so now see here what is happening here we have water bodies okay and here we have the land bodies so during day time what will happen during day time since we have this part all those solid parts so during day time this will be heated okay here we will have high temperature so here we have the high temperature 
and this part since it is solid and there is a like a less gap between the molecules so here what will happen it will be heated very fast okay so this part will heat very fast and here in this side what will happen here we have the water bodies so in the daytime what will happen it will heat but it will heat slowly so before that what will happen now wind is blowing from now since this part is a cooler part okay now if wind hits this part also there what will happen water is evaporate so now in the downward part what will happen here we will have the cold water only means what a little bit you can say it as like a normal water here we will have so here what will happen here since temperature is low so here since temperature is low we have the high pressure and here since the temperature is high here we have the low pressure so that is during the daytime so remember remember this daytime process also okay and remember the concepts because this type of land bridge and about the land bridge and sea bridge questions are asked almost in all exams so remember this process this concept so here what is happening during the daytime wind will blow from the sea to land high pressure to low pressure you know that wind blows from high pressure to low pressure so here what will happen wind will blow from sea to land and when it is blowing from sea to land that particular wind is known as the sea breeze okay so that is known as sea breeze and that blows during the daytime so remember sea breeze blows during the daytime and land breeze we have to during the night time so remember this concept if you know the concept you can eat. okay see so that was about the sea breeze that was about the sea breeze now we will study about the land breeze so see here in land breeze how how those phenomena is taking place so that part we will see here so during the during the daytime what will happen during the night time what will happen here this our earth part continental part will be cooled down and it will be cooled down in a very faster way how it will cool down in a very faster way because here we have the less gap between the, the that physics if you would have studied physics or chemistry that in the solid part we have the less gap between the molecules so here what will happen in the solid part that heat will be lost easily okay so during the night time what will happen here heat will be lost easily so in this continental part we have the low temperature so here we have the low temperature means what we have the high pressure okay now in the water body what is happening we have the cooling of water but there, there is the slow process of cooling of water okay so there is the heat in this area so here we have the high temperature that is comparing to the land so here we have the creation of low pressure on this water bodies okay so that time what will happen during the night time you all know that wind blows from high pressure to low pressure okay so now wind is blowing from high pressure to low pressure so that is happening during the night time okay and since wind is blowing from the winds towards the ocean water that particular is known as the land breeze okay so that is known as the land breeze and that blows during the night time so this is about the land breeze and the sea breeze and this land breeze and sea breeze both are the land breeze and sea breeze both are the periodic winds so you must know that and uh, monsoons that is the signal which then see here in this diagram also you can easily understand through the diagram so all these parts are i have mentioned in the slides ppts so you can go home and study by yourself also now see here about the mountain bridge and the valley bridge see how this mountain bridge and valley bridge are happening see that same thing mountain bridge we see how we have seen that land bridge and sea bridge so that same thing process you can also see here also so in the land bridge, valley bridge and mountain bridge what will happen mountain bridge means what so wind will be blowing from mountain towards the valley so see here if we have the mountain so this particular is mountain part okay then this particular with the valley part so here what happens in the daytime 
during the day time sun will be reaching first here okay so here high temperature will have during the day time so we have the low pressure here yeah then we have the during the day time we have the high temperature at this place so we have the low pressure here then here we have the low temperature okay so here we have the high pressure here here so wind blows from high pressure to low pressure so from here to here it is blowing and it is blowing from the valley so this is another valley bridge okay so valley bridge happens during the day time so remember this one also then about the mountain bridge okay then what happens mountain bridge when during the night time what happens this valley part will be this valley part will be like during the day time slowly slowly it will be heated up so it will not lose its heat suddenly so there will be heat in this part so if heat is there means at the valley part we have the low pressure then this mountain you all know that as you go go up the height so their temperature decreases so here what happens this will cool suddenly suddenly so because of cooling we have the low temperature that means here we have the high pressure so wind will be blowing from mountain to valley area so this particular known as the mountain bridge so this is about the valley bridge and mountain bridge so this all you can see in, in the diagram also so this is all about the secondary winds or periodic winds so secondary we have two types one is seasonal and another one is periodic so seasonal we saw that that is monsoon and in periodic we have land and sea bridge and we have the mountain and valley bridge so see you can see in this all these slides also then now we will see about the tertiary or local winds okay so they are the local winds so that's why it is known as the tertiary winds so there are different types of winds blowing in our earth area okay so all the difference like you can see in our india we have loop then if you go in the egypt side we have the khamsin khamsin then we have sirocco which uh, we have sirocco which when it crosses the mediterranean sea it be, it brings the blood rainfall in the europe area so that all local winds i mentioned this part okay so local differences of temperature and pressure produce local winds okay such winds are local in extent and are confined to the lowest levels of the troposphere so some examples we can see here some examples are there so see here, in the map i have mentioned so see here in the this in the australia part we have the big filter okay here we have the sirocco wind hamilton we have then we have the khamsin here we have the helm bora wind we have poen wind we have levanter we have so all these are the local winds okay then here we have the chinook and remember this chinook this is chinook part is also known as the snow eater why it is known as snow eater because this is a warm wind okay and here we have the rocky mountain in the north america so that what happens that during the winter time or during the night time what will happen when there is the ice caps on the this part so what will happen when the chinook wind will blow that time this part all this ice will start melting so that's why chinook is known as the snow eater okay sirocco is known as the blood rain okay why because sirocco see now it is in the south africa part in the northern america part so here what is when it crosses the mediterranean sea here we have the mediterranean sea okay when it crosses the mediterranean sea when it goes towards the italy part so there it brings the blood rainfall what happens here we have the all those desert area from here it brings or it takes all those sand parts small sandy particles so that sandy sandy particles with it when the clouds are bursted so here in italy side we have the rain so that sand particles they start falling down on the ground okay so that's why it is known as the blood rainfall so sirocco brings the blood rainfall then this hermantan this wind also known as the doctor wind so that also you must know so these are all the parts of local winds okay so all those are mentioned here so in in india we have the loop then we have the foe so this is also hot wind and loo you all know that that is a hot wind so you must remember all those hot winds and local winds 
all those lists I have mentioned in this part. So, when is a hot wind? So, of local importance in the Alps area. Where is the Alps mountain? That is in the Europe. So, in the Alps area, we have the Poen. Then, we have Mistral also. So, that all winds, local winds, I have mentioned in this part. See here, Chinook. So, all those local winds, Mistral, that is a cold wind. And Chinook, Lu, all those are warm winds, okay, hot winds. So, Mistral is one of the local names given to such winds that blow from the Alps over France towards the Mediterranean Sea. So, that is a cold wind. And here we have the Poen. That is a hot wind. So, all those winds and that hot and cold that you also must know. So, because in a exam it might come like matching. So, they might give the like Poen, Chinook, Mistral life they might give and they would give in the other side. Hot wind, cold wind, so like they would give. So remember that that is a hot wind, this is a cold wind that you all must remember. Then we, we say, well, then Sirocco. So see here, this is also known as the blood rain. So remember this other name of this part. So see here, all those hot and cold, it is mentioned. Okay. So Chinook is blowing towards the liver side of rockies. Poen, it blows liver side of arcs. So all these are mentioned. Okay. So I study through all these parts also. Then see, especially for the exam point of view, I have brought all these parts. Okay. So just go through the, all these parts and mostly all winds mentioned in these parts are important for exams. So Chinook have come already in exam, Poen also comes in, Sirocco. This part is not important, but I study for this part also. Okay. So in this part, in these slides, only Solano and Punas. All this part have been not have not been asked in the exam. Okay, other all part have been repeated in repeatedly asked in the exam. So you must know that what type of wind they are. So Chinook is a hot wind, Cohen is a hot wind, Kamsin is a hot wind. So you see in desert wind, desert most of the wind blowing they are the hot wind only. Sirocco is a hot wind, Hermatan hot wind. So this is also another doctor wind. Okay, Sirocco you must know that they see another. This brings the blood rainfall in the Italy side. So this also you must know. Then Bora, Mistral, Punaj, Blizzard, all these are the cold winds. And all these are this winds location and mentioned here. So I study all these parts. Then see here. I have brought all this. See in this part also, Norwester have been asked, Santana have been asked, Levanter have been asked. So go go through the all those winds and what type of winds they are. And, and which location they are blowing. So this is all about the winds and different types of winds and their local winds or their locations. So all those everything I have mentioned in these slides. So just go through all these parts. So this is all about the local winds. Local winds and also this is all about the winds and its classification parts. So now any doubt in winds part, you all can ask for me. Any doubt in the winds part? Any doubt in the wind part? Anyone? Okay. So see here. Now wind part we have finished. Okay. Now we will study about the study about the temperature inversion. Okay. So in this temperature inversion means while studying the while studying the part of atmosphere there you all would have seen there we saw that normal lapse rate and the negative lapse rate that is known as the temperature inversion okay so see here now what is happening in our atmosphere as we go up the height our temperature decreases okay but when we enter the stratosphere part there what happens temperature increases so if you could see in this graph what happens see as we going up the height Temperature is decreasing. Okay. But at the tropopause, there is silence. Then, as we enter in the stratosphere part, then there we have the increase in temperature through this graph. Also, you can see. So, why there is increase in the stratosphere? Because here we have the presence of ozone hole. And what ozone hole is doing? It is absorbing the UV rays. There is a UV rays coming to this part. Okay. And it is reflected there. Okay, so because of that we have the increase in temperature. Okay, 
so that's why that increase in temperature as you go up the height so that is known as the temperature inversion that is known as the temperature inversion so that we have seen in the other part also and you know that as we go up the height temperature decreases that is known as the lapse rate okay and as we enter in the stratosphere or as we go up the height if the temperature is increasing that is known as the temperature inversion so this is about the lapse rate and temperature inversion so you can see here lapse rate means what temperature lapse or temperature lapse rate that we you all know that we have studied in the earlier part that as we go up so if you go up like if you go 1 km upwards then there is a decrease in minus 6.5 degrees celsius okay so minus 6.5 degrees celsius will be decreasing and this might vary at different locations okay somewhere it might be minus 8.5 also it be minus 10 also so that average we are taking so as we go up the height in the troposphere part or on the earth surface minus 6.5 degrees celsius decreases so that part is known as the lap set normal lap set okay and when a normal lap set or also you can say it is the positive lap set and as we enter in the stratosphere part or on some parts where there is an increase in temperature as we are going up the height okay so that particular is known as the negative lap set so that particular is negative lap set known as the temperature inversion okay so this is about the temperature inversion now in this part we have there are totally four types of temperature inversion okay so you must know the name and temperature inversion means you know that as we go up the height temperature also will be increasing so that is the temperature inversion part so totally we have four types of temperature inversion that all those parts we will study here so see in the next part so this is all about the lap set so about the lap set and temperature inversion all those i have mentioned in the slides so you all know this. so see here the fall in temperature with altitude is primarily due to the atmosphere okay so atmosphere is mostly transparent so incoming sort of radiation but actually absorbs the outgoing tracial radiation and greenhouse gas like co2 water vapor so they are maintaining the heat so here what is happening they are maintaining the heat they are absorbing those incoming that uh, outgoing the tracial radiation so because of that there is a pull on our earth surface and as we are, go, we are going on the height so our temperature is decreasing in the troposphere part okay so see here greenhouse gases like co2 water vapor are the primary absorbers of the tracial radiation and their concentration is highest at the earth surface and goes on decreasing with altitude so hence temperature falls in the altitude so now ideal conditions for temperature inversion so you must know this one that at which place we have the temperature inversion if there is a long night long night if there is a long night then there is the temperature inversion there temperature inversion might take place okay and all this see long night happens during the winter season okay so see during the winter season you all would have found that what will happen we have the long night like by the five o'clock sun will be setting and sun will be rising by like 8 am so we have the maximum time gap okay so this is long night is a part of that is the condition for the temperature inversion okay and if we have the short nights then there will be no temperature inversion we will be having the normal lap set okay so long nights so that outgoing radiation is greater than the incoming radiation then clear skies which allows unobstructed except of radiation then calm and stable air okay when we have the unstable air then we will be having the rain okay and if calm and stable air is there then that is the ideal condition for the temperature inversion okay so if we have the stable air then there, there we won't have the mixing of airs so see actually air does not mix but what happens see now suppose if our earth is heated this is our continental part okay when earth is heated means what due to warm air this air is will ascend okay when it will ascend and in the this part we have the cold air 
cold air coming down. Okay. So here what will happen when warm air blowing? So here from the downwards, what will happen? It will take all those small small dust particles. So when it will take the small dust particles, okay, and here cold air is there, okay. So here small droplets are there, small that hygroscopic nuclei is there. So there what will happen? These warm air will go there, okay, and from here all those dust particles will get settled here, okay. So here what will happen? Now this small droplets will increase its shape, okay. Then similarly all other small droplets will increase their shape. Then this particular these two small droplets will become big, okay. And lice, they will they will become big. There will be no mixing of warm air and cold air. This is warm air and this is cold air. Okay. And now here what again these dust particles are going and settling down on those cold air that droplets parts. Okay. So here what is happening? We have the unstable condition. Okay. So here we have the unstable air. Okay. So this is not the mixing, this is the unstable air. So because of that, what is happening when the arm warm air is going up? When it is becoming big, big, bigger in shape, so that time after that it is, you know that now it is suspended in the atmosphere. So now after when it becomes bigger, bigger, so there what will happen when it becomes bigger, bigger, then what will happen? After some time it will be not able to suspend itself with that much weight. So after that it will start bursting and then after that there we have the tail on the earth. So, in the unstable air, only we have the rain in the earth. Okay. And when we have the stable air, so when we have the stable air, if there is no moisture in this air part, okay, only dust particles are there. From here, cold air is coming. So, what is happening? There will be no mixing in this part. And if there will be no mixing, so there we will have the stable air. That is the stable condition. So, okay. So, this is the ideal condition for the temperature inversion. So this part you all must resolve. Now see here, temperature inversion that lapse that we saw. Then temperature inversion. Temperature inversion as you go up height, so temperature also starts increasing. So that is the temperature inversion. So see here through this graph also you all can understand. Then see totally we have four types of temperature inversion. One is surface inversion. One is upper air inversion. Then you have the frontal inversion. Then you have the valley inversion. Okay, so here what will happen now? All these types of temperature inversion will study. So see here now in normal condition. See here we have the when we have those unstable condition. So there will be the wet like there will be no mixing. But what will happen that all those dust particles carried with the warm air they will settle down. Then after that they will be start they will start increasing the increasing the size of those droplets hygroscopic hygroscopic nuclei so remember that in our atmosphere we have presence of hygroscopic nuclei that is nothing but a, a small droplets of water okay that now what is happening we have the cool air of course so that a small droplets of water cold air cold air that is the hygroscopic nuclei so say in normal condition we will have rainfall so what will happen now in this next slide we will see now in temperature inversion what will happen we study that cool air and warm air we have so here what will happen now cool air you all know that they will descend and warm air ascends it will go up the height so here what happened here we will have no mixing okay then mixing will be not the cool air will be coming down and warm air will be going up so here we have the stable condition so here since a stable condition is there okay so here there will be the no form no setting down of dust on the hygroscopic nuclei okay so the then the water droplets will not increase so that time what will happen that time what will happen there will be a lack of rainfall so this in the temperature inversion we study that in the temperature inversion we have the cool air coming down the cool air you all know that it descends and warm air. So, up of cool air, we have a warm air. So, this is the part of temperature inversion. Okay. So, that similarly you can study that you can easily know by the studying the atmosphere of the earth. So, in troposphere, we have cool air. As you go in the stratosphere, we have warm air. So, there we cool air, warm air. So, through this also you can easily understand 
if we have the warm air going up and cool air coming down and there is stable condition so there will be the lack of rainfall and their temperature inversion will be taking place so see here during the winter season why we have the that smoke smoke and a smog area see the smoke we are having due to the burning burning of crops and all these parts okay and fog we have okay that uh, unclear sky so what is happening now in this part only what is happening that smoke now see if there is a rainfall means what will happen they mix all those smoke and dust particles they will mix with the water hygroscopic uh, nuclei and there will be the rainfall but in this temperature inversion part what will happen we won't have the we won't have the mix uh, unstable condition so there what will happen there we have the formation of smoke and that fog so that fog smoke they are mixing that is known as smoke so that what is happening that you can see early during the winter season and during the winter season means what land surface will be full and as you going up the height there is a warm air okay so here the temperature inversion is taking places so this is the surface inversion okay so that's all with the surface inversion tomorrow we'll see about all those different types of inversion so actually we have the class nda classes at the seven o'clock so we'll win our session here so again tomorrow when we come back we'll study this temperature inversion part then after that we'll see precipitations rainfall so all those parts we'll see tomorrow so if any doubt in this part you can ask for me now